All right, my name is Dr. Rayshon Ray, aiming to speak truth to power, and this is my daily thought. Why should you not dress in blackface, and why should you not laugh at it? This is a brief history lesson on blackface and its historical significance. So starting off in the early to mid-1800s, obviously during this time, blacks were still enslaved. They couldn't, um, they didn't have citizenship. I mean, they were considered three-fifths of a human. And so when plays and performances started to continue to gain currency in, in the United States, what happened at that time was that uh, that didn't mean that blacks were absent from, uh, from film. And so what they would do, or as film kind of started to take off, obviously, with, uh, into the 1900s with Birth of a Nation. But at this time, um, whites would play black characters in performances. And the way that they would play black characters is not with brown face like my skin, like 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 black people actually are, like African Americans actually are. Instead, they would have black face, similar to the bill of my hat. And what they would do is they would perform caricatures and stereotypical uh, type of performances about black people, whether that be about uh, stereotypes about laziness, which is really interesting. How you can have a stereotype of laziness when, when you're a slave picking cotton and um, and other crops that are important to the United States like tobacco, because, of course, we know the United States was was founded on tobacco, cotton and slave labor. So you're calling the group that essentially made America, that put America on its backs. You're calling them lazy. And then, of course, there are stereotypes about what people eat and the certain things that they do. So blacks couldn't perform in these mainstreams, but the stereotypes about black people still persisted, and it persisted in blackface. I mean, we simply have to look at the original birth of a nation, made in 1915, where uh, this period right after the Civil War ended, what we saw was from 1865 to 1877, a lot of racial progress as blacks were given uh, citizenship and opportunities to vote. Then all of a sudden we entered the period uh, of the Nadir, where all of a sudden we saw blacks um, Blacks' rights be uh, be restricted and relegated. And then, of course, we saw the implementation of Jim Crow laws. So part of the original birth of a nation was to show what would happen if we keep letting black people lead. And, of course, this is just a narrative that's persistent. I mean, whether it be about the Japanese or the Chinese um, or about Native Americans and even um, Irish and Germans. And, and this was kind of, kind of before that transition when they became white. And so we fast forward to current times. We've seen, continuously seen blackface pop up, particularly on college campuses at, uh, at parties that uh, fraternities and sororities perform. And we've seen a lot of this. I mean, we've seen... Um, I mean, for example, take take Clemson University. Uh, one of my uh, fraternity brothers, Creston Lynch, was actually working there as an administrator. He's now an administrator at Southern Methodist University. But when he was at Clemson, um, some students had a, a party, um, a black face party where students were literally like in black body. They also put aluminum foil on their teeth. Um, they also patted their behind. So very stereotypical caricatures. Then they taped 40 mark liquor bottles to their hands with uh, with duct tape. And then they were like, oh, we were just playing. It was all in fun. But then it gets dicey because they did it on MLK's holiday. Mm. You, you know, you, you really have to question stuff like that. And then, and then, you know, not just on college campuses, but I mean, we see it kind of writ large when we look kind of across the board um, in neighborhoods, whether that be in Memphis or other places where people are actually hanging, um, hanging caricatures who are supposed to be black from trees some of which are supposed to be the president of the United States, President Barack Obama. This is why all of this is highly problematic. And then, I mean, it, it even goes into the federal government. So you had the, um, the, the, um, the home, you had Homeland Security who, uh, they have a Halloween party every year. And one year they gave the best costume to a man who got in, got in brown face, actually, actually brown body, but donned a prison outfit and dreadlocks. I mean, and people think that these sort of things are funny. More recently, we've had people dressing up as Trayvon Martin. Um, I mean, more or less having the gunshot wounds on his body as if we are uh, trivializing the fact that a grown man shot and killed a 17 year old boy who wasn't doing anything wrong. And of course, this goes into other groups as well. Native Americans. Um, I mean, we can look at uh, the, the stereotypical caricatures as it relates to to uh, to Muslim Americans and other individuals. And so stereotypical cultural appropriation is pervasive 
and dripping in racist ideologies and images for blacks and other groups. But this is the bottom line. If you see somebody in blackface, give them a brief history lesson. Or maybe some people just want an excuse to be racist. And so while some people are saying that it's funny, in short, what you actually might be doing is engaging in blackface not to just laugh at it, but to actually take liberties on Halloween or around Halloween to engage in racist behaviors to justify your racism. Hmm. So look, as always, conversations matter like black lives and books. And I hope this has sparked one. I hope if you see someone in blackface that you won't laugh. Instead, you'll tell them why they shouldn't do that. And then if they laugh it off or act like it's okay, I hope you'll call them out. Tell them that they're being racist in that moment and probably are actually racist. Because if you don't do that, your silence is your acceptance.